Lord, you know that we are here not to mourn the death, but to celebrate a life. We ask you to look down on someone who we all know met the test of life, to use the grace of turn, and left behind a lot of people who loved her and miss her and have to work around the hole in our lives that she left. But the sorrow that we feel is for us, not for her. So we ask you to be with us when we leave this place so that we continue to have those memories of her that we cherish and the sense that we have truly seen the completion of her life here today. Amen. Amen. Doreen was one of those people who tears a hole in your heart when they're gone. And it's because they were so central to your life. In some ways, you don't really realize how central until they're gone. It's kind of like your own heartbeat, your own pulse beat. You don't want to miss it until you lose it. She reminded me of a conversation that I had with another very dear friend of mine who dedicated his entire life to taking care of other people. And he said, there is no such thing as altruism. He said, the people who look after the people in their lives do it not for altruism, but because it's more important to them than anything else in their lives. And that was Doreen. And that is why we have the hole in our hearts that we have. But if we're not willing to have that heart, that hole, then we won't open ourselves to the joy of having her when she's here. So I'm pretty sure she's looking down on us. If we get too maudlin, she's going to whack us. Okay? But I'm sure that she is hearing what we're saying and realizing that, you know what? Maybe I didn't do such a bad job. I'm Sharon. Um, I don't remember meeting Doreen. She was just there. She was just a part of my life all of a sudden. And, you know, her and Bill, and they were talking about sort of little mister coming into their lives and how much she was looking forward to having him and with her and Bill. I always thought of Doreen as an old soul. She just incorporated everything good in life. She loved everybody. She took care of everybody in a way that lifted you up instead of letting you sit down. She brought you up in the world. And I always thought that she, her love is always going to be here. It's always going to be in our hearts and involved in all of it, everything that she touched. In one way or another, she's still here. And she loved you. You know, never doubt that because she's right here. So I wanted y'all to remember, you know, that old soul, she's here. She's looking out. So she loves you. I was, I had dropped out of college. I was working a terrible retail job. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know who I wanted to be. And and I, I remember at first thinking it was a little weird that these folks who I barely knew were inviting me to their house up in Los Alamos and being like, hmm, I don't know about this. <laughs> and then that as soon as I show up, they're like, okay, so help, start helping out with the artwork. What? <laughs> Just this, this moment of like, okay, I guess I'm doing manual labor now. Um, but um, but one of the one of the moments from that first evening there is Doreen was making a brisket, and of course I was I was hooked. I had to come back for more of that brisket. I mean, my God. But um, you know, I I had a can of, of soda or something, and I without even really thinking about it, you know, set the can down and I crushed the can to put it into the into the recycling, and. It didn't even occur to me that I had set it down on the rug. And she gave me this look. This I, All of you who know her, you know oh, yeah. the look. Oh, yes. She gave me the look, and I was just... 
very <laughs> just that moment. And um, you know, in in years since, I've um, I've often described rather than explaining to people who Bill and Doreen are to me, you know, oh, there's these people I know who I met at the thing and the blah. I just have called them my aunt and uncle. It, you know, just for simplicity's sake, but the fact of the matter is, they're they're my family. They're they're just as much family to me as as my parents, as as any as any blood. And that I didn't always treat her like family, or maybe I treated her exactly like family in that I. I didn't call as much as I should have, and it was just always that assumption of, oh, I can, I can call tomorrow, I can, I can talk to her some other time. And um, when I lost, I was a costumer on a cruise ship, and, and when I lost that job, and I, I ended up back in New Mexico. That was, that was probably the lowest point in my life, and, and they were right there for me, they were right there for me, and that was. We went to dinner down in Albuquerque, and. I didn't know it, but that was the last time I'd ever see Dory. I, I'm so lucky I got to see her. She taught me. She taught me. She was a teacher. And she taught us all how to take care of other people, but. She took care of us. Now that she's not here, it's our job to take care of each other. And when I when I got the the job at the Santa Fe Opera, when I when I finally got back into costuming after yet another year of shitty retail job, I I was walking backstage on my first day and I was looking around and I just thought I said to her, "We made it." And I don't think I would have made it without her. I don't think I would have. After she passed, I I was thinking about ways I wanted to remember her, and I ended up getting this tattoo, which is her shield that she carried in the SCA. And I wanted it right here on my shield arm because she was my shield for so long. But the shield is, for those of you who can't really see it clearly, it is a teardrop, half black and half white, very much like the yin yang. It is tears of joy and tears of sorrow. So I'll always have her as my shield. But as as it is starting to rain. We all have to remember that balance, the tears of joy and the tears of sorrow, and the... And the way that we give those to other people, just the same way she gave them to us. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? She's crying for us. Well, as as it starts to rain, let's let's begin to wrap this up. Um, Doreen was a witch, as as we all know. She practiced her own sort of spirituality that combined a lot of different um, religious practices. And one of the very important practices, or elements of her practice, and one of her wishes was that her tools be burned one year and one day after she passed. So.
roll call? And he says, Honey, come here! <laughs> They have found one of their people. So, time passed, uh, and I spent a lot of time. And then came Dorian's most recent heart problem. And she was in the hospital in Albuquerque. And of course, you know, logistics was almost Albuquerque, raids in school. Lots back and forth. As it happens, my family's in Albuquerque, so I had the occasion to go down there one day, and it was just me and her. Most of the visit, just shooting this stuff, right? I got ready to leave, and I could tell she wanted to say something, but she wasn't ready. So I stalled. And I stalled. And finally she broke. Because, you know, she's about to have open heart surgery. She's scared. But not for her. She was scared for these two. Bill and Brady. And as we all know about the Doreen. She never asked you to do any more than your best, and she let you find what was your best. But once you found it, her expectation was then that you walked that line. <laughs> and that's when she asked you a favor. She asked me, over Bill and Brayden. Make sure Brayden got through school, which means you're stuck with me at least another decade, kid. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and for me, that's uh, that's the point at which I understood her evaluation of my best. And it is humbling. So, Bill, great. You're stuck with me. I don't know the exact quote. I meant to write it down, but every time I tried to sit down and write down something to say today, it just didn't happen. But there's a quote somewhere along the lines of, you don't begin to heal until somebody listens to you. And Doreen would take the time and listen to you, no matter who you were, where you came from. And I will always treasure that. was one of my favorite people to get in trouble for a good cause with. <laughs> um, some of you know about us and Toys for Tots. It was one of our favorite things to do would be to haul off and run down and take down the toys for the Marine Corps, you know. And look at all the shiny pretty marines <laughs> and amaze the marines that here two of us women you know well past 50 was chucking the toys just as fast as the marines were and booyah mic drop that was us <laughs> um, another thing we did I remember once I'm a girl scout leader and some of my people, when it was 
when it was cookie time had bailed on me, causing us to miss out on a truck. With our troop, that was like, that was a problem because there was about 12,000 cookies headed our way. So I called up Doreen and I said, Doreen, you want to help me out? And she says, yeah, where do I meet you at? I said, I can't tell you that until until an hour before because I don't know until an hour before. And she's like, oh, shiny, we're going to be drug runners. (laughs) 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 So here's to you, my favorite drug runner. (laughs) And chucker. (laughs) Thank you for always telling me the things I needed to hear whether I wanted to hear them or not. I'm going to miss you. Let me make sure I get up there with you, okay? Kick some ass if you have to. <laughs> <I think so. laughs>